to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. All I ever do is game in the basement, my hands on my cock. I sit here, it's great. Well, thank you very much for taking time out with us. The pleasure is mine, and uh, you're going to have a nice long exit now. A lot, nice long outro, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, once again, uh, Chris Cologne of the Two Strangers One Podcast, yes. Geeky Inc., oh my God. and the Tsunami Faithful Podcast. Like it goes on forever, doesn't it? <laughs> Signing on New York Comic Con 2017. Don't be a stranger. What did you just say? That was the longest introduction I've ever heard. What was all that? Suck it, Shatner. It's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show, and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey, man, this is Kevin Smith, the guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers, One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit twostrangersonepodcast.net. Now, here's Chris Cologne and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Austin. And uh, so for the... Everyone pretty much listening at home, uh, Austin is a new stranger. Uh, we haven't kicked Paul off the show yet. <laughs> no, that being said, uh, uh, Austin is a guy I started working with a couple months ago. And it's weird as I'm looking at when I say that, so I'm going to look away to kind of avoid that kind of social discomfort. <laughs> uh, so I'm told a lie, guys. <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, you know, like, when you get a job and sometimes, like, you click with, like, one person, like, every, like you know, everyone everyone has, like, that work friend, you know, where, like, because like, you were off on Friday, yeah. and I was forced to talk to other people, <laughs> and I'm learning gossip, I'm like, did you hear somebody, somebody got fired, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and, and like, yeah, I heard that Thursday, <laughs> I'm just not part of the group yet. I was, I was too busy talking to you, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh. So to all the other people listening at home, uh, you know, welcome Austin Thank to you. the podcast. I would have to say, you know, working like, and I'm not going to say where we work because I don't know if I don't want to get in trouble or jammed up or anything. I've yet to name where I work. Uh, I always <laughs> since I mentioned where I work after I stopped working there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just so like they can't say, oh, you said such and such about us. We'll just call it the drug mines. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and we kind of we have we have a fucking pretty monotonous. Yeah. trained monkey could do this put, job kind put, of job put medicine in a box <laughs> <laughs> but uh with that being said we can part of part of that day when you're doing all this bullshit monotonous repetitive work kind of gives you a chance to kind of just goof with each other and uh you know it's much better than like other co-workers like with other co-workers just name names <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, fuck it like like I know it's a guy thing, and maybe it's because like we're not like big macho men oh, and no, shit. Talking football, football, and, shit, and yeah. man, you see the football game, and yeah. it's a guy, and, and then the cut and the tackles and the things, yeah. and the, the guys, you know, and you know, they're like, did, did you see Justice League? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, so like, um, you know, it's just I, thankfully, yeah. we found each other because I think the first you were talking to someone about. Might have been, might have been Captain America. Uh, talking, to, uh, talking to Lewis, who doesn't work there anymore. So we can talk about shit about Lewis. Uh, I, was, I think it was Lewis. Yeah, it was you, me, and Lewis were dumping product down a drain. I can't even say what product. It'll be like, oh, what sells that? Um, yeah, we were, we were we were dumping that product after the one run, and then yeah, I was talking about Captain America or something. You're like, do you guys know who Kevin Smith is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, do you know what Kevin said? And that's sort of, it, it, it pretty much opens a door. Like, I know later on, um, you'll have stories from Comic Con, but like, you know, sometimes when you, when, like, if when you're online, if you're on a line to see a movie, you're online at a, or a Comic Con or something like that, like, obviously you're, you're with their, you're with someone and you're online and you kind of catch that one thing that you, you kind of have like, yeah. So I was like, you guys heard of Kevin Smith? Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, that opens up a lot of doors. Once someone says, yeah, I listen, you know, and then there's, of course, there's different levels. Like, I've seen, I've seen Chasing Amy, yeah. you know, that's, you know. Uh, then, then there was that, that kind of ultimate level of it where I'm like, oh yeah, I went and saw a show a few years ago in Buffalo. You're like, oh yeah. shit, you were there? Yeah, we were both yeah. at the, uh, we were both at the Buffalo show, which coincidentally, uh, one of the other occasional guest hosts, uh, Jen, Jen Falanga, uh, she was also at that show. That's how she found me. Uh, she was, I had... Basically, I brought my book up to, to Kevin Smith because I ran an Indigo. I ran a Kickstarter to raise money so I can advertise specifically on his podcast. Right. Um, so he can advertise my book. And uh, 
So I had sent them a copy of the book, uh, just sort of like hooking up the advertisement. I had sent a copy of the book, and then I was like, I just sent them a copy. I'm like, I could give them an autograph copy. Mm -hmm. So I, I I ordered two more copies when I was getting ready to go to the Buffalo show. And I, of course, I had to pimp the podcast. You know, like oh, I have to. Act, I'm pretending to act like a. I'm asking a question so I could pretty much pimp my podcast and a room full of. Kevin I was Smith probably fans. sitting up there next to my dad, like oh, this fucking guy. <laughs> Let him get back to the show. He didn't pay to see him. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, I was able, and I brought my I brought my two books up to the stage, and then Jen was in the crowd, and Jen being from Rochester, and I believe I had said I'm from Rochester, like you know, she did that. She went that extra woman stalking step and like looked me up online, <laughs> and coincidentally, like I think when she looked me up on Facebook. We had a mutual friend, and it was a guy who was my ex roommate, and he was a fucking crackhead piece of shit. But uh, <laughs> that's how you feel about him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and oh, uh, you know, and it was one of those dudes that are like, like he went out every night to the bar every day, and like his Facebook page, like literally, I think he had like literally like two or three thousand Facebook friends. It was like ridiculous because like he friended everyone he could because he went out drinking every night to right. the bars, and so I guess she contacted him. And this was actually before him and I became roommates, but she had contacted him and said, oh, you know this guy, you know, um, you know, I forgot exactly how she put it, but like, you know, so, so like, like you or like she is it cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then so she so I, she had uh, kind of like, I don't know, she I, forget, I think he just said, you know, she wants to hang out or whatever. So, you know, that's how that's how Jen and I met. So ironically enough, it's sort of like then you're not ironically, but coincidentally enough, yeah. you were at that hey. show. And it's like it reminds me of that, like, um. You know that that one punk rock story where like there was one real shitty show at like CBGBs, but like everybody who was there went out and started their own bands. Uh, it was like Blondie and, yeah. and the Ramones and all these others. Oh, if you so hear that noise the, in the background, that's yeah, that, that's my guinea pigs being assholes. <laughs> so I thought it'd be a good idea to record this right next to two cages full of rodents. <laughs> now, uh, you know, and of course, we, you know, with the prerequisite Kevin Smith stuff, you know. Uh, you know, Star Wars fan, yeah. uh, Batman the animated series fan. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you know it's it's one of those deals where like once you say Kevin Smith, it's almost like shorthand. Like, do you like this? Do you right. like that? So, yeah, do, you, do you listen to this podcast? Yes. Okay, then you like everything I like <laughs> and agree with me on most topics of pop culture. <laughs> and now, uh, you were part of a a Twitch a, a Twitch. We, we did uh, a, a little a Twitch. Essentially a podcast. It, it was a a video podcast. Yeah, it was, it was like a, a weekly web show thing we did called the Meta, where we just we take all the gaming news for the week. We huddled up in my friend's garage. It, like it, it, it was very professional production. But if you just watched it, it looks like you know how the fuck are these guys doing this? If you know the best place they have is a garage, <laughs> we just need, you know sit you know anchor style across a table, have just our laptops out and go through you know show trailers. Be like this is how we feel about the trailers and. Yeah, that's, so it's, that's my experience with podcasting is that. <laughs> now, uh, so I think one of the things we were both uh, excited about this week, because like, okay, so well, no, two weeks ago, I went to go see Thor. Yes. And and I was so excited, like I wanted to go see it again. Yeah. <laughs> and and I was like, I'm like, awesome, we gotta go see Thor. Yeah. Now I got I got plans with my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome, we gotta go see Thor. Uh, no, Chris, I'm broke. <laughs> I'll pay for your ticket. Let's go see Thor. So right. I'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, our, our big it's, it's like my off week, man. I don't have any money. I was like, fuck out. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the big concern we were talking about, you know, me coming onto the podcast is like, I haven't seen Thor and you haven't finished Stranger Things. We're not going to be able to talk about anything. It's just going to be two hours of dancing around spoilers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, the original concept, which I don't know how much we're going to get to it, but I had said, come on the show and let's talk about Stranger Things. <laughs> so, hopefully, sometime this episode we'll get to some. I have it last on my list, <laughs> but because I assumed it would take up the most time, but like, I've got other things here that I, I could see us going on. <laughs> I, 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 you know, there's a fucking consensus online that this, oh, it's horrible, and it's, you know, and it's like, it's better than, well, I, Batman and, v Superman. And anytime a movie comes out that I that I want to see in any way or feel a duty to see, like you know, any comic book movie, I'm gonna be there, mm -hmm. whether I want to or not. So you know, just as I'll go on to Rotten Tomatoes and see, and it's the critics' consensus is it was like 37 percent the other night. It was up to 40 by you know actual opening day, mm -hmm. but the audience was like 80 percent loved it. Yeah, kind of thing. And it's it's always that divide where the the Air quotes, you can't see them. Um, <laughs> the 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 shitty, so-called shitty DC movies. It's always that divide where critics say 
twenty percent, and then you know for Suicide Squad audiences liked it like sixty nine percent, which you can chuckle at because sixty nine is like a sex thing. <laughs> well, that's I mean, yeah, the Warner Brothers, the Warner Brothers DC movies have seemed to have a, a, a rough history with Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's, it's super divisive between critics and audiences. And I saw another link this morning, as a matter of fact, on my Facebook about a guy who had said like I guess he was a reviewer and he was like you know he said like Rotten Tomatoes like I think they they posted his review but he's like I never posted it yet or I haven't posted it yet or they posted it before he did and he's like you know Rotten Tomatoes is in my house (laughs) (laughs) they've hacked my computer they want to know how I feel about Cyborg they killed my wife (laughs) but it's it's you know I like I I tend not to go to those sites because I mean it's sort of it's just like reviews in any way in general sort of I, I I don't want to, and I, every time I look, and it's either confirmation bias, like I go and look, oh yeah, Thor's at 93%, or I look at Justice League, I'm like, well, that's just what, what critics think, so it's never it's never a helpful experience, it's, yeah. you know, any movie I see a low score for that I wanted to see, like, well, it's probably still good. <laughs> but when Thor does well, then fuck right. you. When, <laughs> when, when Thor does great. well, I'm like, yeah, 90% Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> but like, you know, Suburbicon, 30%, like, well, I like Matt Damon, though. Wait, what movie was that? Suburbicon, the new George Clooney thing. Is it, It's like a weird dark comedy attacking racism in the 50s or something. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. But it, it looked good. It looked like a... Is it, is it, is it doing well on Rotten Tomatoes? No, no not oh. at all. <laughs> no, it, it, and, and the criticism... Is that... Is that registering? That, that's my... It's probably uh, registering. Yeah, that's, that's my hamster. Uh, just that's, fucking going that's, to town with a water bottle. <laughs> it's Austin's uh, supposedly nocturnal hamster who decided to wake up right now. You never, like, get up for a drink of water? <laughs> I gotta uh, go piss. Go back to bed, you little shit. Um, <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. Well, what's, 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 what's Are you guys stuff? recording? Yeah. You guys talking <laughs> Justice League? Oh, did you, did your podcast just take a screeching halt because <laughs> I came out to get a drink? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just gonna... Take a shit in the corner here if you guys want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> what were we saying? Just moving chips around? Um, so Justice League. Suburbicon. Oh, Suburbicon. Oh, yeah, we're just getting okay, as far from the thread as we can. Uh, Suburbicon, it, it's, it didn't do well on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. It, and it's the comparison, and this is what sucks about critics, is they're yeah. like, it looks like it's trying to be like the Coen brothers, but it falls short of that. But maybe it's not trying that, and that's why you're, you know, you're coloring your expectations like, oh, it's trying to be like the next Fargo, but it doesn't work. Mm. Maybe it's not trying. That. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay. Now, keeping the, the most recent topics, George Clooney as Batman, since we're kind of talking Justice League. All right, I'll, I'll roll with this. <laughs> I, you know, I think you know, taking into consideration that that movie was supposed to be corny, it was supposed to be campy. It, yeah. It, you it, know, it was... Joel Schumacher. And, and, I mean, I don't even know who the fuck wrote it, but... It, it was like, what if the Tim Burton Batman movies were the real world? What would the campy Batman 66 kind of movies look like? Mm-hmm. And it looked like the Schumacher movies. So, but, I like, I think if, if you put George Clooney, if you gave him a proper script... Yeah. And a proper, I mean, at the time, not 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 now. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, now, you, could, you could give him, like, Dark Knight Returns now. Uh, and I'd say, why didn't you give it to Keaton? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I think George Clooney. I mean, since, I mean, might as well since we're on, since yeah, we're okay. kind of mentioned, you brought him up. I'm, I think I'm he no would have. He would have been a good. I think if had you given him a, good, a better script, yeah. he 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 was a great Bruce Wayne because he's been method acting Bruce Wayne since the nineties. <laughs> he's he's yeah, just, just handsome, rich, he's been a, a famous but possibly gay millionaire for <laughs> decades. <laughs> He's married now, so obviously, but, you know, he's just got that confirmed bachelor. Like, oh, Bruce, how come you're never with a woman or anything? Like, oh, I'm married to my work kind of thing. <laughs> and it, George Clooney had that vibe for years, and he, you know, he pretty much just had to show up to Batman and Robin and be George Clooney when he was uh, in I that suit. I mean, I thought it was sort of like, you know, how come you're not married? Because I'm fucking everything that moves. <laughs> <laughs> that too, but the, um, there was an interview, I, th- I want to say George Clooney, basically outright stated as far as the batman and robin movie is concerned batman is a closeted homosexual wow like it just but like the um everything he said as far as like oh i'm not the dating or i'm not i'm not the marrying type and mm-hmm. stuff like that and the the bat nipples he said everything in there was supposed to subsexually say you know kind of painting the you know secret life of being the batman as some sort of allegory to the secret life of the closeted homosexual wow yeah do you think do you think joel schumacher kind of helped push that I, paint that picture or I, I mean 
he must have been distracted by something to make that movie. So I'd imagine well, it could could have been. Just, I mean, because <laughs> Joel Schumacher, who you know, and it's funny because like Joel Schumacher, you know, he's made some movies that were like okay. The uh, Lost Boys is mm. a very gay movie, <laughs> and it's not that really I, Lost Boys. You don't say. <laughs> but uh, you know, but I, I feel like the '80s were a very gay time as far as <laughs> you know. When we call something a gay movie, what we consider you know the gay flag post to be, I feel like that's just the '80s coming into now. Like, wow, that's gay. No, it's just pastel. It's big back then. <laughs> but you know, but then you go see you see a movie like Falling Down, which I love. I haven't seen Falling Down. Oh I'm my sorry. god. Wow, and that's and wow. okay. I get wow. I guess that's another that's another uh, dynamic is that 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 you're 25, yeah, and I'm 40. So like you know, I mean, like I I've always had like a, a age gap with like you know, like like Paul's like nine years younger than me or something like that. But like like there's a 15 year difference, but it's mm. sort of you know, I think I'm pretty fucking immature for my age so i think that's yeah (laughs) you're wearing a ninja turtle shirt (laughs) i I at least dressed up for this (laughs) with his uh the shining (laughs) jack nicholson screaming that he's johnny on my shirt yeah uh so like you know but it it is kind of weird not weird i you know it's cool that like even though like we're a generation apart Mm. do you consider yourself a millennial (sighs) even though (laughs) technically speaking yes Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, I see an article like, oh, this is how millennials are, you know, yeah. fucking the taxi services. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I feel like maybe, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that sentence. <laughs> well, because, like... They, uh, I'm just some disaffected millennial. I have opinions and shit. But like, they, like, they go, like, they say, oh, you know, like, people have said that I'm Gen X. And I'm sort of like, I don't feel Gen X. Mm. Like, I'm a fan of Kevin Smith. And I, Kevin Smith is definitely Gen X. Like, mm. you know, you know, and then now there's, art. I've seen articles on Facebook or whatever. And it's said that I keep citing Facebook as my source of <laughs> information. But <laughs> but it was like, you know, there's a, there's a small span of people born between 1977 and 1983 where they're too young to be... Generation X, but too old to be millennials, and they're called Xennials. Xennials. Xennials, and I'm like, Ugh. but you know, I mean, I do kind of get that. Like, I mean, I remember phones with cords, <laughs> you know, and 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 but record like, players. Well, and... to the same end, though, I remember phones with cords. We had a record player. I, I feel like you know, people are like. Well, only you know people who were alive in the seventies or poor in the nineties remember these things. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I remember the big forty-pound TV uh, with the big fucking tube, and you know, yeah, big, big cathode tube. <laughs> and then you go to a rich friend's house, it's like, oh yeah, we have a projection TV that puts the image backwards on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like, you know, and it's it's so funny how like you look at the technology, like stuff that's going to be, uh, you know. Stuff that let's say 10, 10 years. Oh, this is the wave of the future, and we are ten years later. It's like nope, nope. It's not, not like I would love to grab like a like a magazine from like ten years ago, like you know, the the new big thing of twenty two thousand seven. You know, and here Z- it's- Zima and laser disc. <laughs> it's like what the nineties thought Netflix and chill would be. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and that's all. Like you know, grow, growing up in a generation of like renting. Like I remember like video stores, like the mom and pop video stores before they were. Um, or it was just like you can go to Blockbuster or Hollywood Video. Yeah, and and you know, like I remember, like you know, like I remember time when having a VCR was a fucking luxury. Yeah. You know, and, and like you know, I, I like literally in my building where I grew up, you know, twenty one stories. You know, what I'm saying all these families, six families, and mm-hmm. six families on the floor. Two people in the building had a VCR, at least that I'm, that I'm aware of. We, we had a broken VCR for like had to have been like six years, where the tapes would overheat as they played. Mm-hmm. And that would start, you know, something with the warping of it. You'd start, you know, losing sync and, you know, your V-sync would be all fucked up and the sound would just go to static. And we'd have to, like, take the tapes out and throw them in the freezer quick to keep watching the movie. <laughs> and, and, you know, we'd always say, why don't we get a new VCR? I was like, oh, they're too expensive. Now, you know. Like, <laughs> you can't give away a fucking VCR. Yeah, yeah you, could, you can go to Goodwill. And they're like, oh, yeah, those are, uh, those are uh, 10 for 2 bucks. <laughs> you, oh. you better not be pirating shit. Well, let's, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up something that you had mentioned to me. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the 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 VHS tape you stole. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's, that's right there um, from yeah, the Goodwill. Yeah, yeah. Just th- thanks for outing me. I have to, to confess that we were we were at a, a Goodwill drop off center mm-hmm. to to donate things. So this is this is kind of okay, that's a new concept now. Now they have drop off centers. All right, you don't just full yeah, on you don't storefront just bring it right to the to the Goodwill. You, you go in and it's just. 
piles of shit people donated, and mm-hmm. one of those piles was a huge cardboard box just full of tapes. Big box of porn. Right. Like, <laughs> I don't want your Boner <laughs> Jams 2003. <laughs> I haven't seen the first 2002 of them. I'll be totally lost on the story. Um, and and there, there was uh, The Warrior from Shaolin, starring Gordon Liu, was one of the VHSs there. Mm-hmm. And there was a big sign outside, like, um, you know, the attendant does not have cash on site kind mm-hmm. of thing. So... Basically, it's, I want this tape. Mm-hmm. I don't know what goodwill it's going to wind up at. <laughs> and this guy won't let me buy it from him. <laughs> so just while my girlfriend was handling the, you know, here, here's what we're donating, that your receipt for that, all that shit, I just, you know, shoved a VHS tape into my pocket as nonchalantly as I could, <laughs> well, thinking, you know, if, if they ever notice it's gone, <laughs> either they'll say, well, it was a VHS tape. It's not like he's taking clothes <laughs> off the backs of the less fortunate. And... It you know just they donated a shitload of stuff. Let's say like let's say if you donated twenty five dollars worth, of, I'm pretty sure more right. or less. Yeah. If you donated twenty five dollars worth of stuff and you took a dollar's worth of merchandise, right. like this this is a tape that on Wednesdays would have been fifty cents or something. Yeah, like, like you're you're still in the cosmic red in the black and the red and the, and the red is good, right? Or in no. the black, no, in the black. And, and yeah, you're, cosmically, I'm in the black. Went to Goodwill or. Volunteers of America. Oh, and you got the VCR DVD combo, like I have. Yeah, man, but yeah. the PlayStation next to it plays DVDs, so we only use it for... Uh, that, that VCR has pretty much just played The Empire Strikes Back on a loop. Oh, okay. That, that's my son's favorite. Oh, okay. But, um, so we went to Goodwill to just pick up, like, you know, Disney movies and tapes and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. So we were going to Disney World, and Colton hadn't seen any, like, old Disney cartoons. So we're like, well, we'll find these. And we found uh, uh, Phantom Menace and the original trilogy special editions. Mm-hmm. And then my girlfriend went back to like a different Goodwill a few days later when I wasn't there. I was at work, and she's like, "Hey, I didn't know um, which um, Star Wars movies we had, so I grabbed this one just in case we didn't have it. it was like fifty cents. It was another Phantom Menace." Mm-hmm. And then um, Colton's biological dad gave us a bunch of tapes when we had mentioned that we had a VCR. One of them was Phantom Menace. <laughs> so I, 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 put, I put a post up on Facebook of just the the three of them all side by side. <laughs> I captioned it, the, the prequel trilogy, but every time Boss Nass yells peace, you start over. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you're set, you're pretty much set for life on right, Phantom Menace. Right, like, if, if, in if, case if, one if, breaks. Yeah, yeah, if, if one of them burns out, you've got a couple backups. You if there's know, a fire, at least yeah. grab one. <laughs> Well, well the, the pod race and the duel are all worn out on this one because those are the only parts we watched. <laughs> and uh, I mean, like, I like when that, when that movie came out. Like, I remember buying buying tickets months in advance, and like we, we, we didn't do that. Just no, not a lot of people went to Tinseltown. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, and that's the whole thing is like we, you know, like uh, what was this job? There we go. Oh, See, it's just a computer being a piece of shit. <laughs> 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 How long have we been talking just to each other? Oh, you don't know how many... Oh, that, that's happened on several podcasts or like... I, well, it's, you know what? Sometimes you think you're recording. You yeah. forgot, you know. Right. And like, I'm, I, I go to... I, I look, I bring up, I'll bring up the recording program. Then I'll look up my notes and think I'm then I start we're talking. And I'm like, oh, we've been talking for 20 minutes with nothing. There, there was a, uh, an episode of the meta that I wasn't there for. I, I had to do overtime that day. Mm-hmm. And... I went to watch it and be like, oh, hey, what would they get done today? And there was 54 minutes of video but no audio. And then someone in the chat finally said, hey, you guys know you're not sending audio, right? And they had to restart the entire show. Oh. But and like and then you go online and look at like the archive of it and it's still they, they didn't, you know, start a new file or anything. They just turned the audio on like, alright, let's start over. <laughs> Just skip to 54 I, I guess, minutes. Yeah, you'll, you'll scrub ahead for like an hour and be like, there's no sound in this. I'm not watching this. It's the first time I was really like, why is this a three-hour show? We never, we never really go over like two hours. That's And I never, I like, I mean, I, I, I mean I, I've mean, i watched a couple of Twitch shows. I mean, one, one thing before the podcast, I was, you know, there's one called Double Talk. Which is a Funimation, the the anime the anime company. Right. They they put out a Twitch show, which is pretty much just their YouTube show. Like I think right. they just put it out on all yeah. venues of video. Somebody watch this. Yeah. Um. John Bailey, the Epic Voice guy, he used to do Twitch videos where he's doing the videos and he's also doing voices while he's doing the characters. Um. And he was playing. Um. What's that game where it's it's Fuck for PlayStation? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's for like PlayStation Four and the, the, the newer generation systems. 
where it it has like Rami Malek and uh, oh, until dawn until dawn yeah it's, all, it's PS4 exclusive thank oh. you very much oh okay I have it if you want to just stop recording and <laughs> and, <laughs> well, I mean and it has uh, uh, what's her face it has uh, Hayden Hayden Pan- Pantier Pan- Pantier and you know one of the cool things about that game is that they make the they made the characters look like the, yeah, re- the real life yeah. actors and, and it's it's a barely interactive game too mm-hmm. so really they could have just made it like a like a DVD movie where you choose your own adventure. <laughs> And yeah, well, yeah, and but so like I was like I got I got addicted to the episode where he was playing the Hayden Panettiere, and I always had a crush on her. So like I love uh, NBC's Heroes. I yeah. fucking love that show. Well, if I can't watch her walk around in a towel for real, I'll settle for the computer animation <laughs> yeah. of it. Happening. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll settle for the yoga pants uh, in Until Dawn, yeah. the digital <laughs> yoga pants. Um, so I, I I had watched like his Twitch show there. So like I kind of like I enjoyed Twitch, but I didn't like get super into it. I mean, of course, I I'm sort of like a I haven't had I haven't had Wi-Fi <laughs> like well over a year, so I'm really behind on all my stuff. You know? Well, the meta wasn't really my project, and mm-hmm. that just you know for the guys that were putting it together, it seemed like the best venue at the time to do you know gaming podcast news. So yeah, I that, mean that, that made sense to me. I, I, I've I've gone to Twitch for that and to rewatch the the Metal Gear speedruns that I did through that channel. Oh, so you're like a die. Oh, so for the audience, you're a diehard Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear, yeah. And I, I speed run Metal Gear Solid too, and we we try to do it like every Fourth of July. We'll do. Um, uh, my friend Case and I will take turns uh, streaming speed runs of most of the series. So, like, so. do you have like a capture card or something like that? How do you do that? Because because um, because it's on PlayStation Two, or do you, yeah, or yeah, they, he, do they have it for PlayStation Four? Well, no, he's he's got a he's got capture card stuff all set up, so he'll. We'll, we'll stream right off of PS2 or PS3 for doing the HD ones. Because they don't have... Do they have Metal Gear Solid 4 as like a re-release for PS4? Metal Gear no. Solid 2 for PlayStation 4? No, they, they have it for PlayStation 3. Mm-hmm. But it, it just you stream you know, through the capture card right onto Twitch. Oh, okay. Because so. I mean... And, 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 like, and I, I think I described it like there was one part... It's the part of Metal Gear Solid 2 where you have to get the, uh, the enemies uniform to get past the camera yeah and i literally like spent 12 hours trying to get because i didn't and not realizing it was in your inventory from the moment you're told that you need to do that yeah i, didn't, I must have i'm for whatever reason i must have not paid attention to that one bit and i was literally like you know i kept setting up claymores and like maybe the claymores i was trying to sneak under the camera mm. you know and of course well, maybe only four people will get this you know get the references of what we were talking about but yeah. I just, I couldn't, I literally spent 12, I, like, I saw the sun go down and come back up, because I couldn't figure out that one fucking part. <laughs> just um, hold L2 and press down <laughs> twice. Um, now with the, uh, so I, I haven't, so the are they're up to five now? They're up to five now, and after this is done, if you've got time, I'm going to show you some five, because it's, okay. it's too good. Because, <laughs> that, and that's for PlayStation 4. Three, four, PC, everything. It's on, like they got those old Tiger wristwatch games where, you know, it's got <laughs> just a box. So, so it's on mobile, um, smoke mm. signals, the board game. Yeah. I'm exaggerating a little bit, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's on like last gen and current gen systems minus Nintendo. All right. But to answer your question, yeah, I like Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, we're like halfway through the show, we haven't got even hit the first topic. Yeah, we, we got to. I don't mind running long. If you... so, oh no, no. We'll, so we'll uh, we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes, yeah. and we're back. All right. I, <laughs> I was, was kind of hoping we'd take an actual break so I could pee, but all right. Oh, okay, all right. So we'll be back <laughs> with more dick and fart jokes. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that in post. This episode of Two Strangers One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. Eleven Fifteen East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Click and Hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit 
cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click dash the letter n dash hit.com that's click and hit.com and now for listeners of two strangers one podcast you can use promo code strangers and receive 10 percent off your purchase at click and hit.com that's promo code strangers for 10 percent off your purchase and we're back apparently well i mean <laughs> look i drive to new york city on a giant cup of coffee like this for six hours without stopping to take a piss. I'm right. sort of, I'm used to just holding it. Well, yeah, we, we, um, I went to the, we went to Comic-Con, uh-huh. Rhode Island Comic-Con last weekend. Was that last weekend? Yeah, last weekend. Yeah. And, um, you abandoned me the last two Fridays at yeah. work. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and we won't be there this Friday. And then two weeks later, I won't be there on Friday because we're seeing Star Wars. Um, your Rhode Island Comic-Con yeah, yeah, we're, experience. We're, yeah, we were on the way to Rhode Island Comic-Con. Um, we left from my dad's house, and I pissed before we left, mm. and within 20 minutes, I was asking my brother, hey, can we hit the next rest stop? And it's like, we're barely on the through. Like, yeah, but, like, I'm going to piss my pants in my car. Just, and it's not even that, like, I have a weak bladder. It's just I have very poor timing. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm good to go. I just went after I drank, like, you know, this big old stein of water. And, like, I'll, I'll be fine, I'm, and I'm never fine. <laughs> Yeah, I've just for some reason I've just I've made my body like a camel, yeah. where like like I know I have to piss, but I just won't yeah. like like because like would part of like what our job is like we kind of we put on our spacesuits to go to work or right. whatever, and then you kind of have to take off the spacesuit. It's a whole fucking ordeal, and it's sort of like you know I'll just I'll just wait till lunch. <laughs> I, I, I thought I thought of a funny riff, but I didn't want to interrupt you uh-huh. when you said that you made your body like a camel. A camel. I was gonna say, oh, two humps in your whole life. <laughs> But I'm. Just, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Feel free to uh, cut me off with any kind of non sequitur like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just didn't want to be rude, man. <laughs> it's not my show. <laughs> so back to our first topic that we barely touched: the uh, Justice League. The Justice League. Okay, so you know, lots of um, lots of Wonder Woman in tight pants, yeah. or Gal Gadot and Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot in tight pants. I just, I she's, I like. Whenever she's on screen, it just makes me happy. Like yeah. she's pretty, she's a pretty, but she's like she, charming. She, she's she's realistically structured. Mm-hmm. If, if if I'm gonna be complimentary without being creepy, <laughs> like she she looks like an actual human being instead of a cartoon character. You know, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not Angelina Jolie as Lara Croft. Yeah, um, which is cool. She's so vaguely foreign that she's believable as Wonder Woman. <laughs> so, cause, like if you've ever heard her in interviews. She's, you know, got a much harsher accent than she has for Wonder Woman, but it's still there when she's Wonder Woman. So it's not so much like, oh, she's from Israel. It's oh, she, she's not from around. Here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I think yeah. I, I, in in other podcasts and it might even been Kevin Smith's, they said that they kind of made all the other women on Themyscira mm. kind of have her fucked up accent, right? Like to make <laughs> it look like we, you know, like. Yeah. Oh, she's normal. Where she yeah. comes from, that's normal. Right. Like you know, because like and that and that like there's like black Amazons and and, and you know and, 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 and like and I, I, were there Asian Amazons and I don't think so. But like you know, but like everybody I on that see island. Colors, so. <laughs> no, no, really, it's a problem. I'm colorblind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the uh, but like all the women on Themyscira in the and it's funny. Like no, we're not gonna we're not gonna change the stars. The, the star of the movie, we're not going to have her alter her, her yeah. accent. All you fucking plebes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're going to fucking have change your accent. You're called the supporting cast for a reason. <laughs> yeah. No one cares about, you know, whatever. <laughs> See, I, can't even, I can't even name another. Robin Wright? Robin Wright. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but what was the last movie she made in the past decade? <laughs> House of Cards a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Oh. Thank you, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Wrong. No, it's, <laughs> the uh, oh, fucking asshole. <laughs> so, okay, I mean, Rob. Okay, Robin Wright. Mm. All I know is from like The Princess Bride, right? That's uh, Forrest Gump. She was Jenny. Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Um, she was <laughs> House of Cards. Um, they just uh, they had a, a movie they showed last summer 
like at Cinemark Theaters, was The Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. I'm sure she's got a very expansive career that we just know nothing about because it's Robin Wright. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, but it's. I just find it funny that they kind of they made everyone else kind of have her accent. You know, they're like, oh no, that people from her, everyone talks like that on her island. Well, you're, <laughs> you can do that for one movie, mm-hmm. or you can constantly reshoot and say no, it's pronounced like this for the rest of the whole cinematic universe. Well, I mean, you know, they, I mean, they do have dialect coaches and stuff like that. You know, right? But do you want a dialect coach your star who gets the most screen time for the entire series, or tell everyone, hey, be <laughs> vaguely Israeli for a couple hours? But then, with that being said, she's from Israel. Hmm. But they made the Flash Jewish in the movie because he mentioned he he references himself as a good Jewish boy, or something to that effect. And I think I believe Ezra Miller might Ezra is a very you know first we say gay now we're talking about Jew. Welcome, <laughs> welcome I, to the I, cis I, white I, male podcast. I, I don't feel we're, we're portraying <laughs> in a negative light. It's just it, the, the point was you know Batman and Batman and Robin was supposed to be you know a, kind of a gay allegory for you know the the secrecy of being a superhero. Which I feel is a nice thing to say about gay culture, if you know, if tone deaf. Yeah, um, I don't think the Flash being Jewish is a problem in any way. Well, I mean, it's not a problem, but I mean, I, I mean, I um, not that I'm like this comics historian, mm-hmm. but is Barry Allen <laughs> the, is, is I guess is that like a Larry it, David? It, it, <laughs> is, is, no, is, is, is Barry Allen historically anything though? Yeah. It, you know, it, it, is. The Flash's faith a big part of who he is. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not Daredevil. Like, you right. know, like obviously, like a Daredevil would be Catholic and stuff like that. That's right. sort of part of it, his, exactly. his his backstory. Um, but like you know, I guess it's sort of like you know, and not that if not that it's like ham fisted and it's not like he's walking around with a big Star David on his chest. Like he, he takes the he takes the lightning bolt off and puts <laughs> Star David on. But I mean, like you know, it's that'd like be an interesting choice. I could see Joss Whedon doing that. <laughs> but it's sort of like you know, here you have an Israeli. Actress, uh-huh. <laughs> but she's not the, you know. But we have Ezra Ezra Miller, who is also kind of he's kind of he has a rock thing going on where you don't know what the fuck he is. But yeah. then he says nice Jewish, he says like nice Jewish boy or I, something like that. I, I feel like that was just a little like, hey, in case you were wondering, yeah, Jewish, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're inclusive in this movie. Right, that, we got yeah. the black guy and the chick. <laughs> I, I, and also, I, the, I do, you don't I want do to chime wanna, in. I do want to talk about Cyborg though. He and not like. What they did with the character, how well he was acted, or whatever, but he looked like a body in a funeral parlor. Yeah, the, like the, Ray the, Fisher... the makeup job on him was very reanimated corpse, but not in a zombie way. I thought that was really cool. I don't know if it was on purpose. Oh, because like, like Ray Fisher, it's funny. Like certain scenes in the movie, he looks fine. Yeah. Sometimes, some scenes, he looks like he's wearing way too much makeup. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I don't know if they well, were trying and, to do I, that. And that's what I'm getting at is w- w- when I noticed the makeup, mm-hmm. which maybe it wasn't in every scene, but when I noticed the makeup, it was, I felt like it was either an intentional or a subconscious, this is what a dead body looks like, and he's essentially dead. Oh, okay. that, That's how I took it. I could be wrong. And and I, keeping I guess... in mind, Zack Snyder made this movie, so it's probably not like a smart choice someone made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad lighting or it, something. It, it, was, it was probably just like, someone asks him that years later, he's like, Oh yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> like, and, and it's you know with the uh, you know it's I guess spoilers I guess we can just say just you know we're, we're, we're talking about Justice League. If you haven't seen Justice League, <laughs> listen to this after you've seen Justice League. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> but they kind of I I do like what they do, which I guess yes, in, in in the comics he does get his power from the mother box, or there's like a mother box explosion in the in the comics. That's just a funny sentence. <laughs> but that's a- a- edit this in the mother box explosion. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um. But you know how they kind of also tie that the mother box power also gives Steppenwolf his, or at least you know he's he's mm-hmm. like so it's sort of I, I like what they did with where they kind of made it where is his is he gonna turn into a bad guy where he's he's even questioning himself yeah. or like my power comes from the same engine that powers the fucking the the, worst yeah. scumbag in the universe. That was an interesting take, and I wish they would have done more with it than just had Aquaman say, I don't trust you, <laughs> and just kind of left it at that, and it never came back to them in any way, in any yeah. meaningful way, at least. Well, you know, when it got when it got to the whole middle of the movie, Joss Whedon, we're a team, but we're yeah. we're, we're fighting with each other, but yeah. we, we understand we have to work together. And that, that that's like... <laughs> that was the I, most I, Avengers... Well, I, I have so many problems with this movie, <laughs> but I liked it. That, that's another thing I, I, really, I really wanted to bring up. When, whenever, 
whenever someone joins the team, it's not a, okay, cool, we got them. It's a, yeah, sure. <laughs> there's this, like, um, this tip in directing that you're supposed to look at every scene as a chase scene. One, you know, one person is trying to get something and one other person is working to an opposite goal. Otherwise, there's no scene to watch. Mm-hmm. A lot of this movie was just people agreeing with each other. <laughs> it was, you know, Aquaman showing up being like, oh, I'm on the team now, by the way. Like, oh, we didn't have to do anything? No, just we got attacked by Steppenwolf. I'm here. We're good. And, <laughs> like, well, okay, I like it. The, spo- the trailers spoiled mm. some of the better parts of the movie. In, in my a DC opinion. movie? That's weird, though. <laughs> <laughs> They but so, like you know, they had they had that cool scene in the trailer where he finally, you know, Aquaman shows up and he's like, "You're dressed as a bat, cool," you yeah. know. But like back when Bruce Wayne is in the, I'm assuming Alaskan Ifrit or not Ifrit, the, the, the cold place, Inuit, you know, whatever. But not, not the Dean Coons, the cold place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he's he's at the town where you know you know Aquaman shows up once yeah. a year and helps these people because they're isolated and, yeah. and so they don't starve. He brings them fish and yeah. food and water or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and like in front of all those people, like, you're dressed like a bat. You're, you're dressed like a bat. He says it like three times in front of all of these people. And I think even in the fucking small, isolated part of the world, people know who Bruce Wayne is. Right, and, and, and he's he's just like, oh, you're the Batman. You're crazy, Bruce Wayne, and he swims away. And I, maybe, I know, you know. But um, so he has, you know. But then that whole scene gets. He says it. Before that, I you know I kind of liked in the trailer where he kind of shows up on the scene like oh dressed like a bat you know I, like, I, I actually I hadn't noticed him saying it in the, the the Eskimo village thing yeah well yeah he on their way to the water yeah he says it literally like he says it at least twice All right. very loudly All right. <laughs> like, Dude, uh, you know it, you can tell everyone who you are fucking don't fucking it, spread my secret yeah. Well, and maybe that's uh, we we could tie that back to being another game metaphor of you know like you know gay people outing other gay people in front of people like no that's not cool maybe probably not so at and, least that's not what they intended I'm sure I mean I did I do like how they kind of set up the characters where I th- this is a nice springboard where when if if there was an Aquaman movie now we've been we've been introduced to Mara um, you know if there was a cyborg movie. You know, and I say if only because you know we're the, the fucking DC universe is sort of always is on the fucking you know we don't know where it's coming or going, but um I, I, I had said when they were talking about making Justice League, you know they were like Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, Justice League. That's when it was the progression before they brought Wonder Woman in. Before that, mm-hmm. I was upset because the Avengers gave us all the heroes, then gave us the movie for them, and having seen what they did with Aquaman, the Flash, and Cyborg, as far as like how developed or how not developed the characters really were. I don't know that we needed solo movies for that. You don't? I, I it's a it's a really cool team up movie uh-huh. as far as, you know, Aquaman, the Flash, Cyborg, Batman, you know, I can just mm-hmm. list all the characters. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> all of them working together, mm-hmm. they play off of each other well. I don't see You don't see I, a flash I, movie I, I don't or, see, a, well, or a cyborg well, movie. I, or... I could see a flash movie because their idea for the flash is flashpoint. Yeah. But that's just gonna be Dark Justice League, you know, d- different different characters in the Justice League and the Ezra Miller's still the Flash. Mm-hmm. So it's not gonna be a flash movie, it's going to be a flashpoint. Gotcha. Cyborg, I don't see him carrying his own movie. Just he's he's not an interesting enough character. He's just a robot. I could see him being the main character in like a Teen Titans thing. Mm-hmm. Aquaman, I, you know, J- Jason Momoa was a very attractive gentleman. I'd watch him in anything. I don't, <laughs> you know, he probably couldn't. Nobody could really carry a solo Aquaman movie. I don't think. Even well, I mean, I mean, now that they've introduced the world and they've introduced Mera and they introduced yeah. Aquaman, you know, they can bring in. I just I wonder you know, what else they have to say about Aquaman at that point though. We've we've seen Atlantis, we've seen what he can do. There's the stakes of like Steppenwolf and Darkseid and stuff. I I don't see how yeah, they can they make could, me care about what's going on under the sea. They could bring Black Manta in, you know. I'm sure they could, and and, and, and that we'd would all be... laugh about it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, of course they'd find a way to make it look cool. It wouldn't be the big giant fucking spaceship well, on the set, though, because like costume wise, they've been really faithful throughout this whole series. I, they they would make it somewhat streamlined. They could. It make, would. It they, would. They couldn't make Enchantress cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, all right. So, all right. So let's use, let's let's do that. What what order from best to worst of the of the DC extended being Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, right. Wonder Woman, yeah. Suicide Squad. Um, Wonder Woman is top. Mm-hmm. I feel like if anyone argues with that, they're sexist. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's a funny joke to make, but it's also exactly how I feel because 
there's no comparison between how well made that movie was and all the other DC Extended Universe movies. Mm -hmm. um, Justice League is right after that. Mm -hmm. Well, not right after that. It's very far under that. <laughs> it's, it's the next one on the list. Mm -hmm. um, I might be alone in this, but I think Suicide Squad would be third best. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh, that's right. There's five. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. yeah um, Su Suicide Squad's third best. It was at least a fun movie. Mm -hmm. um, Batman vs. Superman was 20 minutes of a good Batman movie. <laughs> and, and then Man of Steel was... I, I'm not a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Mm -hmm. It was sad origin of Superman and then Dragon Ball Z for a half hour. Oh, yeah. That, that's that, that's how I'm, I'm well, I, 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 that movie. Out. I agree with that. I agree with that. Even I mean, like I I, I really liked Suicide Squad, mm. but I would say that Justice League was a better movie. You know, I like yeah, Suicide Squad because it felt yeah. fun. Yeah, you it, know, and, and that's how I feel is Justice League full of problems. I could we could do a whole podcast <laughs> about everything wrong with just or with um, Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Okay, yeah. And same with Justice League, where I recognize a lot of issues with it, but I still had a good time. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, I try to think back, and there's not really a scene in it where I think, oh, they could have done this a little different. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there's not a... And it wasn't Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder had nothing to do with it. That's probably part mm -hmm. of it. And then, like, when they bring in fucking Billy Crudup to be fucking the Flash's dad. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. I, I was like, you know, does Billy Crudup have fucking naked pictures of Zack Snyder somewhere? Like he's popping up in his fucking <laughs> do you movies. Do not like Billy. Crudup? I don't like Billy Crudup. Why I not, don't. <laughs> I don't know. This is something about him. Like, is... did, did, do you think he just cruds up every movie? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I, you know, but I, but I'm, sh <laughs> I, I, you know, I, you know. <sighs> I'm like, ah, I, you know, it, I see his dad, and I'm like, oh, come it, on, really? He was incredibly harmless for this movie, and and for me, I. I loved the shit out of Watchmen. I liked Watchmen too, but it's just sort of I just like I don't know. We need someone to play an emotionalist. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. he, he plays the straight man very, very well. Yeah, but like as soon as I saw him, I was just like, oh, man. him and Zack Snyder has to be friends. Or they have to. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it, it's that, that's his pantheon. Same reason um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is Thomas Wayne. True. He's, he's true. just he pulls people he can bring in. Well, <laughs> well, Joe Chill, I guess Martha. you've got the pearls now, don't you? <laughs> and I guess that would be for fans of Hollywood Babylon. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, so that's like, Kevin Smith's. Kevin Negan Smith's Jerry, Jeffrey D. Morgan as Negan on Walking Dead. Um, oh, um, the, the Flash movie, they want to do Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. Agreed that Jeffrey Dean Morgan should be Batman. Oh no, abs no, absolutely. Yeah, no, that, I, that's the whole thing. Is that like, I I'm totally on board with a Flashpoint movie, especially if they kind of say like, this universe is not going the way they want it to go. Let's do a Flashpoint movie to kind of but but then, be a at, reboot. At, at the end of it, you're saying you know people are expecting like, ha, he fixed it, he got back to his own time, but he just doesn't. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, it's just sort of I mean, I I want to see a cyborg movie. I want to see. I definitely. I think if anything, the one. I think an Aquaman movie. It would be silly not to do one mm -hmm. after this one. And I, and you know because you can you can the same way you did Wonder Woman. It would be. It, it's even though Wonder Woman was part of this world, whatever. You the the real world or the the surface world doesn't come part of this fucking movie at all. Mm -hmm. For some reason, everybody's in bubbles. Because I love how like. Yeah. He's floating around in the water, yeah. but when he needs to talk to Mera, she, she yeah. waves her hand, and magically there's a big yeah. bubble around them. Um, I should just carry like whiteboard. She's <laughs> like stepping wall. Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> and you know, <laughs> they would, you know, I mean, it would look like you know the Gungan city, you know, everything underground, you know, underwater. Um, but I think you know you can bring in a whole challenger to the crown. You know, Sea King slash Black Manta sort of maybe teaming up. You know, where it's, it's Aquaman doing his own Aquaman thing. All right. You yeah. know, and of course, you know, you bring in the big gun, big guns. You know, you know somehow, bat, you know, you sque you'll squeeze a Ben Affleck cameo in there. Or you'll squeeze a, a a Green Lantern cameo. You know, you'll you'll you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll you can squeeze in someone else from the universe. Wonder Woman shows up. I'm like, oh, what are you doing with that? Amazonian, and, and that's that's what I'm saying is he he fits in so nicely with the Justice League as a team. Mm -hmm. It's it's tough to imagine him. If anyone could do it, it'd be him. He was a he was the yeah, actor that made Aquaman interesting. Yeah, I mean, he play he's Cal Drago. I mean, yeah. you could you could mm -hmm. make Cal Drago you could make a Cal Drago movie just yeah. make it underwater and say it's Aquaman. That's right. <laughs> you guys old Calistar riding seahorses. <laughs> but how fucking badass would that be? You know. Like I've said, 
if it's got DC or Marvel or Image in the opening crawl, I'm going to go see it. I just don't know that it's a good idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I don't, you know, a guy with his charm, and then you got, the, like I said, you got the, 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 the girl who plays Mero is fucking gorgeous. You know, you, you'll get, you get some, get a good charismatic player, person to play Black Manta. Make Black Manta the fucking Loki of this universe. Give, give him, finally give us a good bad guy that is going to stick a, a charismatic bad guy, a, 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 an intriguing bad guy to like be someone that might be there more than one movie and isn't a gray monster surrounded by smoke and lightning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, wait. Which one were you talking about? Just now? <laughs> you know, between Doomsday, Ares, and fucking Steppenwolf. I mean, they're pretty much all essentially this, you know, big hulking, gray monster surrounded by smoke and lightning. Um, the series. <laughs> and and um, Enchantress's brother. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The... En- en- Enchantro. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? I... Does it matter? <laughs> it does, you know, just, you know, and so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're all. They're all quintessentially the same. And then once I, like in Justice League, when you see like Steppenwolf beam in, <laughs> you know, it's sort of, it's like. Oh, that was, <laughs> let's talk about how lame Steppenwolf was. Because, yeah, he show how does he show up? He teleports in on a beam. Oh, like, like, like an alien. Yeah, yeah, like an alien. And, and how, how does he get the last, uh, the last piece of the puzzle? Oh, he just takes it because they forgot. The, the Justice League uses it to bring Superman back. Everyone rushes to be like, oh, wait, Superman. And Cyborg. It's, and the, the mother box is on top of a fucking pickup truck. Right. At, at no point does Cyborg think, well, I don't stand a chance against Superman. Maybe I should guard the MacGuffin. <laughs> so, then, yeah, all Steppenwolf had to do was be like, oh, they brought Superman back. But they left the box a quarter mile away on top of a truck. Whoop. <laughs> that easy. Just, just took it. Thanks, guys. Yep. You know, yeah. It, it, no, there's, there's one of the problems I have with Justice League is just they... It, and it wasn't even like nobody was like, "Oh no, we left the box unguarded," <laughs> or like they're like, "Cyborg, guard the box," but they're in so much trouble that they need Cyborg to come, not guard the box. Like, it was just <laughs> everyone was so excited. Superman was back that they left. They left the most important thing on the planet completely. Here's alone. an engine of infinite energy. Let's just leave it on top of a pickup yep. truck. Yeah. Oh, oh, my buddy Clark's back. <laughs> oh, we don't know him, but yeah, he totally is. <laughs> Let's go say hi. <laughs> and I liked how they kind of. That part was kind of cool where he's he doesn't have his memory. Yeah. And it's sort of like, yeah, Superman Superman without being grounded in Kansas yeah. would just fucking wreck. <laughs> just, 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 just knock everyone the fuck out of his way. Like, this, you know, you are all my bitches. Yeah. Sort of, you know. Um, I also liked how nonchalant they were about, oh, we need to dig up Superman. So I was like, <laughs> we shouldn't do this. It's like, we probably should, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they dig Superman and like... I thought it might be, a, you know, they might metaphorically dig up Superman in some way in this movie. But they, they just literally, with shovels, <laughs> dug him up out of the ground and then just picked up his body out of the coffin with absolutely no fanfare. Just like, all right, yep, we're doing this. Get in the water. <laughs> just like, like, slowly pushing him down just like because he's not sinking. <laughs> That's poor father's picture. Right. Yeah, Fuck that guy. Yeah, Fuck Kevin like, Costner. Yeah. He must have really loved Robin Hood. Let's get him out of this box. And then, like, you know, poor fucking Flash and Cyborg are given fucking B-shift duty. Like, you know, the, right. the B-team have to go and dig yeah. up the body. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right. The big gonna, three are going to be over here. We're going to look for Steppenwolf. Aquaman, you go secure the Atlanteans. Make sure everything's okay. Flash, Cyborg, uh... <laughs> Dick up Clark. Do you, do you guys have any shitty jeans? <laughs> <laughs> and like you would, and if and, it, and the whole thing is like Flash is like we could be doing this a lot faster. Like yeah, yeah, he could have just done it in a like, heartbeat. Yeah, I, I could do this a lot quicker, but it feels wrong. Like, yeah, we all think this feels wrong. Please just get it the fuck over with. <laughs> But no, they're having a fucking racially yeah. uh, racially charged moment right, in the yeah. ground. <laughs> you, remember that 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 diversity, you know, breaking down barriers, heart to heart that they had. Literally standing on top of Superman's coffin. That was wonderful. And now... You you can tell watching that movie. You can, like, have a clicker in each hand and be like, that was a Zack Snyder scene. That was a Joss Whedon scene. (laughs) And that that was a Zack Snyder scene. That Joss Whedon was like, well, we can't just leave it like that. We need to reshoot at least a little bit. You get a fist bump in there or something? (laughs) Can we lighten the mood? (laughs) 
<laughs> I'd forgotten about the fist bump entirely. And it's sort of, now the whole thing is at the end of the at, you know with that being said at the end of the movie. He's walking down the street as basically Clark Kent. I I, I wondered how, how like, did they handle it? I was like, Superman returns the same day Clark Kent returns. Yeah, and but, it, but like, I mean, like, they put him in the fucking ground. Yeah. Like, like... Well, they put Clark Kent in the ground. Yeah, and this whole thing is that, I mean, okay, fine, Metropolis is a big fucking city, but you'd think someone would know Clark Kent. And yeah. if you saw your friend or someone you kind yeah. of knew just that you thought was dead yeah. and then walking around in the streets, mm-hmm. like, because now that, okay... In in theory, Superman can come back because he's right. fucking Superman. Mm. You know, so why not just be Superman all the time? Why does he have to walk amongst the fucking people? Well, that was the, that's been the big thing in comic books for Superman. Mm-hmm. Nobody thinks Superman has a secret identity, and mm-hmm. that's the perfect identity. He's so upfront about things. He says, "I'm Superman. I'm you know, I'm Kal El from Krypton. These are my powers. These are my weaknesses. This is everything about me." Mm-hmm. So that nobody suspects he's also living as Clark Kent in Smallville. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. He was buried in Smallville. Mm. For all we know, it, the story in Metropolis is, hey, he, you know, he, he went away. He went he, somewhere, yeah, yeah. yeah. He went away for a while, and the, the story in Smallville is, look, you guys all know that, you know, Clark isn't normal. He was Superman. Let's just keep this shit on lockdown, please. Oh, okay. So, don't, the, don't, so don't people in me. Kansas are like those people in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's, Small towns are good at keeping secrets. That, that's the only way I can explain that away is, yeah, the, 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 people, the people in Smallville are like, oh, yeah, remember when Clark saved that bus full of kids? He's the Superman. Don't fucking say anything about this. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And then, yeah, so he'll, you know, he'll come back and be like, hey, guys, I was gone for a while. What happened? And they're like... That's weird. You left the day Superman died, and now you're back. But he doesn't wear glasses, so, uh, you know, here's your job back at the planet. Yeah, right? You're like, that, that pussy, you know, it, you know, cause, cause <laughs> that pussy. the day Superman died, and let's, 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 let's use an allegory, and right? I'm from New York City, so I can make, you know, the day 9-11 happened, exactly. you ran away and went back to fucking Kansas, you punk little bitch, and now you're back. Well, <laughs> unassuming, you know, weak, naive Clark Kent. Yeah. It's the end of the fucking world. He ran home to mom. Things are settling down. There seems to be this new super Superman team. is Superman's back. back. He's like, all right, I feel safer in the big city. Again. <laughs> I feel safe in Metropolis City. <laughs> then again, there's just the people who are like, that's a weird coincidence. Google obituaries. Clark Kent was pronounced dead in Smallville the day Superman died. <laughs> But you know, and they brought back Diane Lane as the, sort of the mother-in-law because she wasn't officially mother-in-law. She like she kind of she even says herself yeah, mother-in-law to, 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 like, to Lois Lane. Right? Yeah. I thought, oh, it's that Superman's actual mom. <laughs> yeah. um, well, adopted. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, who was the mom on Krypton? I don't know. Was it someone I, famous? I was really distracted because like every single escape pod looked like a penis. <laughs> Um, so I guess uh, you want to talk spoilers post I mean, we're, we've already spoken so spoilers, but I mean, yeah, Superman mid, comes back to life. Mid credits, post credit scene. Uh, mid credit scene was pretty funny. Yeah, and I, I think I want to say that's an uh, that's an actual comic book cover that, that, of them I, running. I believe so. You know, so I yeah. I, I, I I like, the, and that's definitely a job. First, a yeah. mid credit and post credit scene is Joss Whedon influence. Yes. That's obviously right off the bat. And I think he said, let's let's end on a well, at least that's not yeah. well. We're not going to end on a, on a, on a high, on a, on a fun trip, note, yeah. but um, you know, it was light enough where, like, you know, the Flash wants to race Superman. Yeah. That's kind of that's... Superman like, oh, let's see what happens. Like, <laughs> we're around to the Pacific Ocean. Like, all right, yeah. And that time... Oh, which is that? Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> um, which I, that's the whole. I mean, you know, I, I've I've always been under the assumption that Barry Allen was like really smart, like a nerd nerd smart. Yeah. And I mean, I kind of like that. You know, I guess they kind of you know they make him more just like the average Joe. Well, in, in if, this in this movie at least, Cyborg is the world's greatest detective. Mm-hmm. Like he he figures out who Batman is before Batman figures out who Cyborg is. Pretty much, <laughs> he's just like, oh, it's Bruce Wayne. Cool, I'm gonna <laughs> talk to them because I know they're looking for me. So with that in mind, and then you've got Batman. It it'd be a very very brainy Justice League mm-hmm. if you kept the Flash as being you know scientifically inclined. Yeah, I just I, I mean. I, I, is it a departure? I mean, I wasn't ready for it, but I mean, I, I can, you know, I, I'm willing I, to accept it. I don't give enough of a shit about the Flash <laughs> to carry either way. And uh, then they have, um, all right. So then, so the first press, the, the mid credit scene, mm. Flash and Superman seeing who's the world's fastest man, mm. which you know it has to be the Flash. Mm. I mean, Superman's close. That, that that was a that was a big um, plot in Smallville. I don't know if you watched Smallville at all. I did, but not enough. To, I, I, once they introduced the Flash and stuff like that, I kind of fell off. Well, yeah, well, they, they had, you know, 
you know, Clark has his super speed and stuff, and then while he's in his super speed mode where everything's frozen and he's, he's moving normal, mm-hmm. somebody else goes through super fast, and he's like, something out there is faster than me, and we need to figure out what. That was pretty cool. And that, that was the idea was the Flash is even faster than Superman. Yeah, and uh, so, there's, uh, so there's that, and then there's the post credit scene. And yes. that, now, because there, there was months and months of speculation where there was test footage, I think. I don't Was it released by Ben Affleck or was it released by Joe Manganiello? I don't know. I don't know what this is the test footage. Oh, no. The, it was, it Wait, was, is, that, is that who Deathstroke was? Yeah. Joe Manganiello. No yeah. I, I was like, I was expecting, I don't know who I was expecting, but it comes out I'm like, oh, it's this, that, ah, shit, who is that? <laughs> yeah. It, Joe, Joe Manganiello. Mm-hmm. But... Someone had released the footage, mm. and of course it could have been one of those like studio. Yeah. The studio was really behind it, but they somebody and I don't know if it was Joe or Ben Affleck saying like here's here's camera test footage mm. of Deathstroke. Yeah. So that was kind of floating around for a little while, and then there was also uh, oh yeah Jesse Eisenberg's going to be in Justice League. Yeah. You know oh he shaved his head or whatever yeah. or you know and 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 you watch the whole movie and I'm like oh I guess no Lex Luthor. Yeah. You know, and oh, Deathstroke. Okay, maybe maybe they'll use that when they finally do the Batman yeah. movie. But you know, now that they have, you know, they you know they the these little rumors that were floating around all kind of congeal at that the post credit scene of where uh, Lex Luthor breaks out of Arkham. Yeah. You know, obviously hires some crazy bald guy to take his place because yeah. apparently us bald guys all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently Lex Luthor is the Joker for this universe. <laughs> and uh, well, I mean, you know, they have you know, well. Oh, that, that's. That's exactly how the killing joke went, was they're like, hey, wait, you're not the Joker. <laughs> and the Joker is out doing his Joker shit already. And uh, so then, and then of course, he breaks out of jail, but he's on this giant fucking city boat, like like a the, boat the size I, of a city, and that says I, Icona. Well, yeah, and I feel like it had like a big LexCorp logo or something on yeah. it, too. Like, n- n- nothing subtle about it. Yeah, it's, I just, I remember the, the, it said Icon yeah. on it. And and then you know and you see a boat pull up. At first you see real quick like Deathstroke. You see like the you, you, swords yeah, over his you, shoulders. You see swords and a helmet, and you're like, that's <sighs> probably Deathstroke. And like I I was like oh like I like I vocally made a noise in the movie theater. I was like ah! and uh, then you know then he meets uh, Jesse Eisenberg and Lex Luthor or Lex Luthor Jr. Depending on what because uh, I think he's supposed to technically he's Lex Luthor Jr. I in think the movie. he's. I'm pretty sure he's just Michael Sarah. I think him and Michael Sarah are the same people. <laughs> and uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 no, I feel like anyone who ever directs Jesse Eisenberg, uh-huh. whenever he gets out of hand on set, they're like, "Look, I got Michael Sarah on speed dial. He agreed to do it for a thousand dollars less than me. <laughs> Keep it the fuck up, buddy." I. But it's like I. He's Michael Sarah, but with the dark side. <laughs> right, because he had talked to Dark Side. And <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you know. The the, the 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 tagline or the line that then sings like maybe we should start a league of our own and yeah. I was like Gina Davis. But I guess now they're in response to Justice League. There's going to be I mean we already have a Suicide Squad movie so yeah. there's there's already a world of bad guys. Not that I don't think you know but I mean tech technically do you, do you if they want to have Jared do that again though. <laughs> well, Suicide Squad. <laughs> to, oh my God! Yeah, Suicide Two. Or I'd like want it. them to call it Two Squad, <laughs> and it to be very, very self-aware of what kind of movie it is, uh-huh. instead of you know not knowing its tone. I want them to lean really hard into one way or the other. They're either the Devil's Rejects or they're you know a bunch of goofballs trying to do what they can, mm-hmm. and it's got to be called Two Squad. Two Squad. That would be, and then like then you can have Will Smith like this is some sort of Two Squad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we're doing this again, like some kind of. Hot tub time. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really, really interesting to put in just for the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> that part wasn't in the movie, man. Um, which, speaking of speaking of um, parts that weren't in the in the movie, yeah. uh, Alfred talking to someone in a red cape like they knew you were coming. That was in the trailer, but it wasn't in the movie. Huh. All right. <laughs> uh, shit, there, there and, was, was one other thing that wasn't. It was in the trailer, but not in the movie. I forget what it was. Mm-hmm. But it, it, like, very actively upset me. I forget mm-hmm. what it was, though. I'm sorry. All right. And we'll be back with more pissing fart jokes. Yeah. After my piss. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, Nick 
necrophilia. Oh, it's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema Psyops is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am in the most sincerest of senses disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at twelve years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did you watch movie. this shit at twelve? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. So, all right, I think we should wrap it up. <laughs> this is going to be a two-hour episode. Uh, with commercials and intro. Um, let me see. Uh, please visit two strains one podcast.net where you can find all things show related. First and foremost, you can find links to our iTunes page where you can uh, find uh, our most recent episodes. Um, after we changed servers, um, we lost all the old episodes. But you can find all of those older episodes on YouTube.com. Just search for Two Strangers One Podcast. But pretty much any any episode from the past year you can find on iTunes. If you don't have an iPhone, an iPad, or iPod, and who the fuck has an iPod anymore? But if you did, if you don't have those items and you don't use iTunes, you can find us on a Stitcher app. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R, the Stitcher app. For Android devices, um, it's what I use to listen to podcasts. Um, I use the Listen Later option, the available offline option where... Uh, you know, while you're in a Wi-Fi spot like now, you can get all your episodes and listen to them later without killing your data or your battery. Um, and then uh, on all devices, Android and Apple, uh, you could also download the episodes on the SoundCloud app, who is our current ser- servers, SoundCloud. Um, I make sure that this is an option. You can, ma- you can make the episodes not downloadable. I make sure they're downloadable on the SoundCloud app. Um, uh, we want your money. We need your money, but if you can't give us a dime, uh, which we haven't, we like I was playing with the idea of doing a Kickstarter for the podcast, you know, as opposed to the, the failed ones in the past that I showed you the videos from <laughs> earlier. Um, the uh, but if it takes two seconds to share and like us on Facebook, just go to facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast, uh, all spelled out. Uh, once again, you know, it just takes two seconds to share and like the episode. Um, if you want to write us an email, you can write us at twostrangers1podcast at gmail.com. And I just want to double check the email while I totally, I always forget to check the email before the episode. Um, you know, because there's, I don't know, you don't listen to the show. So I don't know. So, I, I have never listened to the show. Oh, you've never listened? So this, this we had. first Two Strangers One Podcast experience. There was a guy from like Chile. His name was Oscar. And he would he wrote like every episode, and he would Uh-oh. just just to fucking berate me and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So uh, you know, but I we have. If you wanted to fuck that child, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had we haven't had an Oscar male in a while. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Maybe he died. How, how awful would you feel? <laughs> but, but look, I don't even know what happened to my first host of the fucking podcast. So <laughs> I don't know what happened to Kristen. Kristen fell off the face of the earth. She won't answer my emails, and she's not on Facebook. Maybe she uh, died. Uh, I'm fucking where I'm scared that it might have happened. Um, now that I've said it, it's going to. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see. All right, so if you want to write us, you can write us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. Also, hey, it's Oscar. Yeah, no. Well, that's no, that's a, that's an old email. For some reason, that's like. Oh, that's in your drafts? Yeah, uh-huh. it's in my. Uh, like, when I bring up the web browser, that's sort of like goes straight to like Oscar's last email. See, Oscar, that's how much you care, you mean to the show that you come up automatically when I type your. Uh, I type the. the email um we're on twitter at stranger podcast uh but twitter's pretty much just a repeat of everything we do on facebook like facebook all it does is just retweet on twitter at stranger podcast but if you want to follow us that'd be great um i want to say that's about it i can't think of anything else i acquiesce the floor to you sir Any, anything you want to pimp or shit i wasn't fucking joking man <laughs> It's a um, lot of stuff, but I mean, it's the brand, you know. You gotta. No, give I, I couldn't rent a car before you started that <laughs> outro, but now I can. 
Uh, I, I don't have anything to pimp right now. Oh, okay. I'm just I'm watching Punisher and raising a kid. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to movie making in the summer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, so you know, right now because you know, don't you know, Paul is still part of the show just because we have a, a new guest host. Uh, you know, it's just at least you know, publicly. <laughs> yeah, right. We haven't put out that press release yet. Slipping my shit in here. <laughs> but you know, uh, Paul's not available each week to record, so like, he's available every other week. So I mean, you know, it would be cool if like on the off weeks, you know, we can do an episode. I'm done with I want to do a weekly episode. Um, but Paul's so busy that, you know, um, you know, he, he can't record every week. So maybe we could do the interim episodes in between. You're still a stranger. You were a stranger two months ago or whatever. So, I mean, you, even though we'd already, you know, been around each other. Yeah. We, didn't know even though, yeah we were in the, uh, in the, uh, the, uh, Kevin Smith, yeah. uh, talking event. Q and A. Q and A. Even yeah. with Kevin Smith as it said on the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you know a couple of years later tusk was out we were probably you know probably had our asses in the same seat in the theater just a few hours apart yeah i, I was i was trying to do the math because like yeah you saw this show and i'm like no nah, man i was that was there the night before yeah but like you know same place that's crazy yeah it's crazy to be able to know that kind of thing to go see, yeah we were pretty much we were yeah. in the same theater within 24 hours of each other I'm, I'm sure it's overlapped before you know we've been in the same mcdonald's within a day or so but like we don't know that because we like, oh <laughs> here's my list of places i've been oh here's mine too hey look there's a mcdonald's overlap that's crazy but you know, yeah we were we were in this you know same theater well, seeing tusk right around the same time yeah rockchester's a small fucking city. like oh, yeah. i didn't realize how small yeah. rockchester was until like i mean i got up here and then like yeah. people know people who know people yeah but and, and B- buffalo is the big crazy one though because mm-hmm. you know half a state away happened to be in the same room that's crazy yeah so um, we wind up working together so you don't have anything to pimp but maybe sometime you will soon um I'm hoping you know I'm, I'm uh, you revise, know revising a script we're, we're 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 working we have kind of a creative project we're kind of thinking of playing with so you know that that hopefully will be done live i'm not like jinxing it by talking about it oh, yeah yeah you fucking killed the project so great <laughs> job, man. <laughs> but uh all right so we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording thank you for listening to two strangers one podcast i'm chris i'm austin don't be a stranger and we're out bye you should be fapping all right here we go man go ahead you want to read double anything? jackpot what is it it is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee. But it is spelled C O L O N. Him punny. But <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a material. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia. Is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. Is this? I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. 
L U L U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, one says it that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot, Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is fifteen dollars, and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, I come! Like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information at Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it, and you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out Two Strangers One Podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.